We'll do a, a pigtail splice. It's basic, it's easy to tape. It's not low profile, but you simply start out by twisting the wire together. And this wire is rather robust, so I'm going to use my pliers. And you just twist it around like this. You want a nice, good, firm joint that would uh, that would be that would be good even without soldering, but mechanically mechanically sound so that when you go to solder it won't fall apart. Okay, let me mount it and we'll go solder it. When I'm doing joints, I prefer to start away from the insulation and then move towards it. That gives the insulation well, it doesn't heat it up as fast and it will cause less um, melting of the insulation. So Now I'm going to leave it for a second, let it cool a little bit. There's our pigtail joint. So you have to get it soldered and you're ready to, uh, to finish it out. Uh, you want to check to make sure there's no sharp burrs or edges in here, points sticking out because they will puncture tape and they'll puncture your uh, shrink wrap. So uh, now this one's pretty clean, so no sharp edges. Another technique is to push the wires together like this. I think they call this an X splice. And then to twist it like this to make it mechanically secure. This is a lot more difficult with a heavier duty wire, I can tell you. Like that. So you have a relatively good mechanically secure splice. And uh, then you solder that. So I'll use a little finer soldering gun. Start in the middle of my joint. And work both ways. Work out both ways. I'm using again a much finer solder because I'm using a much finer wire than before. Go back the other way. And there you have it. Let me show you a variation on this cross splice. Uh, every once in a while you'll run across some wire that's just really rotten and you scrape on it and scrape on it and you can't really get a nice copper shine but you uh, you need to solder it up. So one of the things you can use is this X splice, cross splice and uh, starts out the same way by joining the wires like this. Uh, we'll assume these wires are are uh, somewhat corroded and nasty. We'll go like this and rather than twisting them, let me show you the next step. I'll do this off camera since I can't seem to hold it in focus, but uh, I'll be right back and I'll show you what I have done. So here's what I've done. I've wrapped this joint with uh, another small thin piece of wire, uh, squeezed it down in there, and uh, what that'll do is is if the wire is corroded uh, and you've scraped it off the best you can, these many wrappings will come in contact with the little places where the, the corrosion's been removed and can actually make a, a workable joint. I've done it in a, a marine boat motor when there was uh, an urgent situation. And uh, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll work. It makes a strong joint, uh, but again, a lot of times it'll work uh, when the wire is uh, kind of rotten and uh, you just can't scrape enough of the uh, corrosion off to get a good connection. Otherwise, uh, this will sometimes work for you. So it doesn't solder any differently. Just start in the middle. Work towards one side. Start back in the middle towards the other side. It's hard to see the other side. From here. Okay. And uh, there's our wrapped cross joint, if you will. How do I join two pieces of solid copper wire? Say I'm making a uh, an antenna, a long wire antenna for my crystal radio, something like that, and I want to join some uh, copper wire together to, to make a one long stretch. 
and the wire has to be able to support its own weight over long distances. So how do I do that? Well, let me show you. So first what I do is I come down about two you know, inch and a half, two inches, and I start wrapping one of the wires around the other. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this one back and I'm going to wrap this one around this wire and I'll be right back after I've done that. So here we are done. Uh, the right hand side wire goes through here. It wraps around this way, around our left side wire. Our left side wire comes through and wraps around our right side wire this way. That'll make an extremely strong joint. Let's go solder it. We're not worried about insulation on this one, so we can just kind of start soldering anywhere. We just need the heat and make sure our solder carries all the way through the joints. So here's our joint and we're soldered through the ends. Yes, we've got a uh, good penetration of solder throughout the joint and that will be tremendously strong. It will easily support uh, the pull of the wire and be about as strong as the wire itself. Another splice option is one of these splice tubes and I'm not sure if they're legal for house wiring and so on, so be careful how you use them. But uh, if you have a very, if you had to cut a wire and you do not have much to work with, you don't, you don't have enough spare wire to do an X splice or whatever, um, or you've done a test, you've cut a wire open to do a test and there's just no, uh, no excess wire to make a joint, you can put uh, one end of a wire in there, the other side in there, and see that little hole right there? You heat it, you add solder to it, and you add solder typically to both ends also. And solder flows through there and uh, forms a joint. You can also mechanically crimp it before you solder it, which is not a bad idea. So let's try one of these and, and see how it works. So I've chosen our uh, splice for the size of the, the yellow size of wire I've been using. And as you can see, it uh, doesn't take much. Uh, it doesn't uh, take much stripping of uh, the wire to uh, to expose what you need. Now, again, this is a butt splice, so it's not terribly strong, but it's stronger than, say, trying just to join the ends of the wire together for sure. Splice takes a lot of heat. I'm introducing it into that hole in the center. And I'm making kind of a mess. I can get some in the ends. One end. And I know I'm blocking the angle. Clean up this drip under here. And let's take a close-up look at this splice. Uh, it's not beautiful, but it's okay. You know, it requires a lot of heat. The insulation took a, a beating. Uh, this splice is not insulated. It needs to be taped or shrink, shrink wrapped or something. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's passable. It's uh, got uh, a solid connection in there. And... Um, and if I were using it for automobile, something like that, solar, it wouldn't bother me at all. But, uh, yeah, so there's a butt splice, and it's relatively strong. I'm not going to pull it apart here. Let's say we have this red wire, and we want to uh, run a tap off of that, so we have a three-way connection here. Uh, how do we do that? Well, there's a couple different ways. Uh, they have their pluses and minuses. Uh, we can just simply wrap the wire into here and uh, solder it. Uh, the disadvantage of that is that sometimes it will unroll and pull loose 
And then there's another way of wrapping it in there where you basically tie a knot and solder it. And the disadvantage of that is it produces a bigger bump. But uh, let's look at that. Now what we could do is we could just start wrapping around here like I've started to do. And when we're done wrapping it, we can solder it. Uh, but again, that's prone to, I mean, if it's pulled, it will unroll like this. So it's not the strongest connection. However, it's, it's adequate for most things, for most electrical and electronic applications. But there's one variation on this. Let me show you that. And uh, we'll, uh, it's a stronger joint, and uh, we'll make that one. For this style, it's going to take some more uh, wire, so I bear it off a little bit more, just to be safe. Probably got a little bit too much. but Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start wrapping it around like this. And what I'm going to do is go up first. And I want to keep this tight, so I'm going to go up this red wire first. Keep it in focus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down this direction. And now I'm underneath the wire. I'm underneath the yellow wire. And I continue wrapping down like this. And it's kind of extreme in this case, but okay, we'll, we'll go all the way on this. And then I'll get some pliers and finish that out. We'll solder it and then we'll look at the final result. But this is a, a stronger uh, three-way. And here we go. This is going to take a lot of solder with our tip. Get some heat transfer going. Get the solder flowing into the joint. There we go, starting to wet. this up here. This is a lot of copper on here. Get the drip off the back. Let it cool. And we'll inspect it. You can see pretty clearly here our knot that we tied in there by first going up and then coming back down. And this is a tremendously strong joint. It does take a lot of copper. It does take a lot of solder. So that's the drawback and it is rather bulgy. It's not a nice smooth inline uh, joint that you're going to hide, but uh, it is tremendously strong. My guess is that uh, either wire will break before that joint gives way. Here's a tip. When you're putting in splices in wires that are running close together, or for example like in this zip line, uh, you want to run your splices farther apart so that they're not directly opposite each other. This has a couple effects. One of them is that safety, obviously, that uh, for some reason the insulation fails on one or the other. They're not likely to, as likely to short. And another reason is that when you go to insulate these, when you go to tape them or shrink wrap them, whatever you're going to do, you won't get a huge bulge in one spot. You'll have two smaller spots. And you can usually hide that uh, pretty easily with some shrink wrap over the top of it. These th doesn't matter what type of splice you're going to put in here. Uh, but uh, again, the, the trick here is to stagger them so they're not uh, directly opposite each other in the wire.